Hi there, I'm Lavanna Fay and welcome to Baldur's Gate 3 full release episode 157. Okay, so first things first. We probably need to try and get rid of that curse. Mother, so I think Minthara has removed curse. I do. But they yes, she does. Okay, so let's try this on Gale and we'll see if this actually <laughs> does remove the curse on us. Oh, it did! But we've got a diva summoned. I will do ah. what I can. Okay. Okay. So I guess this is what would have appeared if he died. <laughs> but since we've removed the curse, he's appeared now. Okay. AC twenty one, and he does have a lot of hit points. But we have good stuff as well. Uh, can you be put to sleep? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, well, let's put some drow poison on there and we'll see if we can get this guy. Stricken with drow poison. <laughs> good, because everybody else is surprised and I need them to be uh, awake. So, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> okay, he's up. But everybody else can attack now as well. <laughs> so that's all good. Yeah, you know what? Forget it. Let's just try and get the sneak attack. <laughs> okay. Uh, yep, he is asleep again. That's fantastic. How many is that? 116. Well, let's get your offhand in there anyway. Uh, okay. Kelly used offhand attack on D.Va. She needed 21 hit to hit. They rolled 8 critical hit. Her 8 is a critical? 8 is a critical. Really? That makes no sense, but sure. Um, just a second, Kelly. What is your plus 12? Okay. Let's go with 12. Yeah, okay. <laughs> He's no longer asleep, but you know, whatever. Okay. And he would get an attack of opportunity, so Kelly is just going to have to stay there. Take the hits. Oh. Ah. Okay, he disengaged but didn't go anywhere. <laughs> That's perfect Let's for me, go. I don't mind. Okay. Alright. Hmm. Let's sneak attack him. beautiful and I just kind of want to see what Ascendant Bite is going to be like. Oh, very nice. 17 hit points back. Now that is very lovely. Very lovely. Okay. Only 46 hit points left. All right. Yep. No gloom, all doom. Yeah. Gale, I think this is definitely going to be a shocking grasp type of thing. Uh, you can't upcast shocking grasp, can you? No. But go for it. Hey, it needs 21 to hit. He rolled a 12. Gale. Um, let's give him 17. Beautiful. Okay. And now get away. Yeah. And stay there. Unleash me. Minthara. Minthara. Brand yourself. Probably don't need it, but you know, take a swing. She rolled a twenty-three, she's fine. Beautiful. Okay, so oh it's steel? Really? Really? But this is our corpse. <laughs> we earned this diva corpse. Ah. 
You. If you could just look somewhere else, that would be nice. Well, never mind. Let's move. Never mind. The stuff that was pretty cool. Okay, I wonder how many times you can be cursed. Like that. I'm exhausted. Better find somewhere to camp soon. We will, after we've checked out the mortuary. Are you coming this way? Okay. Um don't want to draw any attention. Get in there. Damn it. Astarian. Let's get into turn based. You can lock pick that. Cool. Get in there. Okay, so mortuary. It really looks like there's nothing interesting in here, doesn't it? Well, that's typical. Okay. Waiting with bated breath. Let's come over here. Okay, records of the deceased. Let's read that. A seemingly endless list of names and causes of death are written in a delicate cursive. This details a recent entry. Deceased. Duke Berlin Stelmain. Human female. Brown hair. Slight build. Cause of death. Blood loss. 36 stab wounds. Position of cuts suggests deliberate placement. Right hand removed from body post-mortem. Blood sample reactive to crawler mucus. Deceased was paralyzed when murder took place. Burial on hold until Flaming Fist investigation is complete. Wow, 36 stab wounds. So, Dolor's first kill, I'm assuming Stelmin was his first kill, was a lot less, mm, a lot less thought out than the rest. The others, he would cut the hand off first. He'd just, you know, paralyze them, then cut the hand off and whatever else happened, happened. But he stabbed her 36 times first. She died and then he took the hand. Messy. Very messy. But deliberate, apparently. Okay. I wonder if they, they made any kind of symbol. Maybe it was a symbol of Baal. <laughs> Well, we'll never know. Okay, and those mouldering caskets are just there. Oh, we're still in turn based. Exit turn based. Oh! Seriously? Jar of Mystic Carrion's lungs! My god, he gets around. My god. Uh, let's take those, definitely. Unbelievable. Val Morba's Notebook. A collection of a mortician's professional notes on embalming and mummification. The most recent note is as follows. I've purchased a rare find from an adventurer who found it in the Undercity. An ancient funerary jar containing internal organs that have been preserved for, I don't know, centuries at least. Their mummification technique is unknown to me, and may include a combination of mortuary, alchemy, and necromantic enchantments. I must find the time to study this in detail, as what I could, as what I learn could be invaluable in enhancing my own embalming techniques. Ooh. Okay, it's a good, it's a good reason to have it, but <laughs> it's it's not a good thing to have. Still. At least your heart was in the right place, Valmorba. Flower preservation note. Okay. Log 47, sample 32A. Added summer lily infused oil to boiling wax. The dipped bouquet neither wilted nor carried the odour of decay, however scent was uniform and lacked variety. Potential ideas. Add widow's blossom and whispering bloom to the wax. 
More pleasant scent, but difficult to maintain solution integrity. The use of a porous solution, a varnish, but visible effects may be more obvious. Prestidigitation, use spell to imbue the bouquet with original odor. However, effects severely limited by time and possible cost. Hmm, okay. Interesting. Okay, and in here. Now take the broom. So, take a large bottle. Bottled blooms. Okay. And a scalpel, but we can't do anything with the uh, the body. Who is Darylin Nickley? Is it? Let's read this. This note is hastily written on a parchment that stinks of rotting flesh and lilacs. Deceased, Darylin Nickley. Human male, medium build. Brown hair, his lies, three and thirty years. Cause of death, untreated infection. Widow claims the deceased cut himself while chopping wood. Reported symptoms of high fever, nausea and diarrhea. Placement and angle of wound in right upper thigh corroborates this, as does the pustulance. Burial, widow unable to afford full burial. Ulkov refused to make a coffin without payment up front. Will oil and bind the body to slow decomposition. Okay. So he's a very pungent person <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay. I was hoping to find some sort of secret, but the only thing that we found is another part of uh, Mystic Carrion, who is long dead at this point. Very long dead. But we know how to get rid of him. Let's throw you over there. Seems like this way. Yep. Oh, <laughs> I got stuck on the door. I tried to throw it through the door. Oh, never mind. I don't suppose. No, okay. Well, just shoot it. There we go. Alright. No one. No one of note was hurt. <laughs> but surely that's all of his pieces now. Surely. I don't think it will have affected anything from our uh, completed quests though. Is it Carrion's servant? Yeah, he's, he's laid to rest once and for all because his heart was destroyed. So all the rest and all of these other things that we're finding of him, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He can't come back from a, a random lung. Well, good. Okay. And guys, oh yeah, Kelly, get back and sneak with everybody else, and then let's get out of here and hope we're not immediately seen. Gail. Okay. Breathe deep and move. And that diva is still there. <laughs> ah, guys. I dislike you so intensely right now. That diva should have been mine. Well, never mind. In fact, let's go let's go rest. Yeah, let's long rest. I do want to make sure Gail doesn't have anything new. Okay, so, no one has an urgent thing to say? No? Good. Let's see if you've got anything to say. Mistra has forsaken Gale entirely. A crushing blow. 
but he is strong enough to persevere, I think. Yeah, okay, so she's cut ties completely. That's what that was. Yeah, it sucks, but he's stronger oh, without her. Something. You wish to consult me? That means Thara doesn't care. <laughs> it's only Gale. Okay. Lazel. I do not trust Mistra to do right with the crown, but I think I trust Gale even less. He must give it to her when the time comes, or his lust for power might well consume him. Oh, she looked worried. <laughs> she looked a little bit worried. Gale, Lazel actually likes you. Um, let's talk to Astarian first. So, Gale's hedging his bets with Mistra? I can't say I blame him. Who'd want to hold a power like the Crown of Carthus in their hands just to hand it to someone else? Mm. I know what my decision would be, but we're all different, of course. <laughs> we all know what your decision would be. I'm just pretending that that's not what my decision would be. <laughs> not until we get there. Not until we get there. He will never know. Poor Gail. Poor Gail. How can I help? Oh, just continue being your lovely self. Yeah. I think... <laughs> I think that's about it. That's all you can do. Okay, let's go to bed. Hey, a nice bed and she still sleeps in her shoes. Okay, sounds like nothing happened. Yeah, okay. So she was just whinging because she was uh, injured, not because anyone had anything to say. Okay. Well, fine. And yes, you should be incredibly over encumbered. <laughs> you were very strong for a while there. Let's get rid of all of this. Bearing no detail, no matter how innocuous, this tale grants the reader comprehensive insight into the life, death, and rebirth of the child of Lolth and Corallon Lorethian, the goddess Elistri. One section runs thusly. An important note, immortals like Elistri view relationships differently than we do. The gaze is cold, abstracted even in the most passionate and vivacious of gods such as she. Think of Telemann's theatre of distance. The viewer is somehow allowed space from the action of the play while still being immersed in the experience. That is how deities think. That is how they view everything in an auditorium of icy long infinity in the nosebleed seats. No wonder Elastre smiled and wept with equal fierceness when she defeated her mother. Hmm, okay. I think we've read Judge of the Damned. Kelimvor. Yeah, I think so. Gnome Father. The introduction of Gnome Father reads like this. The most splendiferous, gregarious, and overall duplicitous of gods, especially for the gnomes who embody those attributes quite cheerfully, is Gal Glittergold. A favourite phrase deployed at gnomish parties and suppers comes from Gal's reply to the mad prophet Osterfeld, who promised Gal the moon, the sun, and all the glinting stars if he could only answer three riddles, to which Gal said, pull the other one, it's got bells on. <laughs> yeah. Exile. The author of Gnome Father also penned this book. A much bleaker read, Exile, is full of sections like this. And with his stony features wrinkling in a snarl, Ladagua, god of the Durga, ah, growled. You hounds and dribbling dogs, I shall have you flayed. I shall string lutes from your guts. What a music shall fill my halls then. Hear me close, you mongrels and slobberers. Slavery is freedom. Freedom from difficult choice and from responsibility. When you enslave an elf, you enchain him to a bit of use, the simpering knife-eared slug. You make him worth a damn. 
Now throttle that morality of yours and fetch me vassals. <laughs> okay. Wow. 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 Uh, Mysterious Moonshare, have we read this one? This book gives pompous but informative insight into Moonshare Isles, an archipelago located west of the Sword Coast. One excerpt reads, Konami, a queen of the swollen muscle giants called Fomorians, found her way to the Moonshare Island of Omen. Along with her loyal kin, she proceeded to conquer Omen. In this author's humble opinion, the continued transgression of the Feywild, such as Konami's incursion into our realm, is a slight upon a rational thinker's pride. The duty should fall to capable individuals to boat or fly, or swim so long as they move, to omen and any such fey infested place and rebuke this impertinence with great verve and vigour. Okay. Lessons of Helm. In this text, you come across the bull-necked, hard-spined doctrines of the god Helm, as transcribed and interpreted by a paladin called Thou shalt not suffer the doom herring to live, O'Reilly. <laughs> he chose that name after being convinced that the Xanathar organization was not led by a many-eyed beholder monster, but by something called a doom herring. The doctrines are the usual religious fair, only mildly distinguished by Helm's focus on the provision of protection to those who need it, forming a shield of steel as well as sympathy for the meek and downtrodden. Yeah. Uh, the Soul Forger. Introduction to The Soul Forger. Dwarven myths are so engaging because the skeleton of their story is tied to a craft of the modern era. The bones are made of steel, iron, nickel, copper, a whole host of metals alloyed and superheated and fused together at the joints of legend. Moradin, soul forger, all father, is said to have crafted the dwarven species from the very core of the planet Aber Toral. By retelling this story, dwarves link themselves to the craft of blacksmithing. They have in one fell swoop tapped an awe vein of metaphor and discovered a seam of cultural import. For dwarves are not born so industrious, so stone were they, so clever at geology. Rather, unlike the growth of long bushy beards, it is learned behaviour. Right. Okay. Well, it's something that they're leaning into, and they've definitely cornered the market on it. There's a uh, it's long been thought that the Dwarven blacksmiths are the best and create the best things. So it's working for them. The lawful god Tyr lost his right hand to Kezef, the Chaos Hound, a devourer of souls and one of the primordial evils. A coalition of gods hell-bent on taking down Kezef chased the hound to the barons of doom and despair and offered him a compact. If the Hound could break chains made by the smith god, Gond, the gods would dissolve their union and leave Kezif be. Isn't that Norse mythology? That's Fenrir or Fenris, one of those. Bound by chains and bit off one of the hands of the, the gods. And he's there until Ragnarok, <laughs> until his chains break. Nice. Uh, Kezef was sceptical, but he agreed, so long as Tia put his hand in the hound's mouth. Tia looked upon the slavering jaws, each tooth as long as a spear, and he agreed at once. Of course, Kezef had not accounted for the strength of the chain, which was rooted in hellish Kakaitis and blessed by the goddess of magic Mistra. Unable to break free, he bit Tia's cle hand clean off, and Tia sealed the bleeding stump and walked one-handed forevermore, as if it were a badge of honour. Which indeed it was, and of boldness and courage besides. Sure. Timora, Lady Luck. Have we already read that one? No, I don't think so. Timora, Lady Luck. A list of oaths and sayings that ought to incur Timora's blessing, granting the speaker good luck. One, by Lady Luck's smile. Two, turntable Timora, I invoke thee. 3. By the rolling of my dice, please let these results be nice. <laughs> 4. Spin, spin, of fickle fate wheel. 
five, Lady of the Diamond Glitter Dice, Mistress of Good Fortune, Sovereign of Luck. Please have mercy on me for f**k's sake. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Lorethian. An introduction to Lorethian by Palmer Junis Sugar reads... It is no exaggeration to say that Corallon Lorethian is the primary figure in the Pantheon of Elves. It is said that his tears mingled with those of Saianine Moonbow actually created elves. As in all myths, the physiological reverse ablation God gives to his people is interesting. The elven people are not formed from Corallon's hip bone, his throat, his testicles. Instead, they arise from an expression of sorrow. Some scholars frame them then as an antidote to his pain. Corallon was, at the time, experiencing loss and feelings of betrayal. More traditional thinking, and here I quote the elven sage Aethir Lequellen, places elves as sad as a species can be. This rings truer for me. Life, after all, deposits its fair share of difficulties on those burdened with living it, and elves endure a long, long time. Yeah, okay. <sighs> okay, only three more to go. <laughs> to know of Mistral, the goddess of magic, we must first consider her earlier incarnations, beginning with Mistral. The Lady of Mysteries is said to have come into existence during the conflict between the goddesses Shar and Salune. In their efforts to best one another, twin sisters of darkness and light inadvertently forged a portion of their opposing energies into a new being of pure magic, Mistral. As an embodiment of magic, Mistral laid claim to unparalleled control of the weave, the very fabric by which magic could be channeled and harnessed, for it was but an extension of her being. For her, to use magic was as natural as it would be for another to draw a breath or curl their finger. It was in minus 339DR that Mistral gave way to Mistra, when the former had her powers seized by Cassus, a Netherese lord and perhaps the most powerful and ambitious wizard to have ever lived. Yet Mistral sought to deny him his ill-gotten prize, sacrificing herself so that for a moment the weave faltered and all magic briefly ceased. Cassus's folly brought about the, destru the destruction of Netheril and the end of his ambition. Yet the weave would not go unattended for long. Within moments, the goddess of magic was reborn as Mistra. Okay, well, it's not much of a sacrifice if you know you're going to be reborn. <laughs> Saluna's devotee. This diary records the life of John Medellin. He suffered from lycanthropy. I think I've read this one. Yeah. Uh, mother of halflings. I think I've read this one as well. Yeah, I think so. I think I've read that one. Okay, good. Send those away. Um, those need to go to Shadow Heart. Yeah. Okay, and those need to go to Gale. If we can. Can we send to Gale? Thank you. Oh, he's got a lot of spells to learn. <laughs> he's got a lot of spells to learn. Oh, we have a lot of gold, so he can do it. 25 new spells. Nice. So, he has... Uh, curriculum of Strategy, Artistry of War. He's learned that, and he's also learned... Where is it? Dethrone. So, <laughs> that should be very interesting. How many, how many fight, fifth level spell slots does he have? Two. Well. <laughs> well. That's pretty awesome. So I was going to give him the staff of spell power, but then I realized that we had war. <laughs> and it's a bound weapon, so it can't be removed from him. He can't drop it. And that sounded amazing. Yeah. Plus, he gets extra hit points when uh, anyone affected by his spell fails a saving throw, so I gave him Circlet of Mental Anguish as well, so hopefully he'll get that hit point boost twice. I took that from Shadow Heart. He's got the Cloak of the Weave now, so that should be very good. And of course, he is wearing the Shelter of Athkatla. 
from Leroican. I need to change the colour of that though. Red does not suit him. And he's got the Dimension Door boots, because there's never any good boots for wizards. Okay, time to look at what Gale's clothing is going to look like in different colours. So, I mean, it's already a kind of red, but we might as well see what red looks like anyway. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, if his <laughs> if his trousers weren't so blindingly gold, then yeah, that would be very nice. I'm liking the hint of yellow in his sleeves, but I think it, it went a little bit wrong. <laughs> it doesn't look as good on the legs than it does on the arms. That's a shame, because that looks that looks pretty nice, actually. Let's just do black and azure. Yeah. No one will ever know that they were once Laroicans either. <laughs> okay. Oh, you know what? I probably should have done something about his shoes. Those are very red, aren't they? I've black and azured him completely. And I really don't quite like how that makes his uh, cloak look, but... Sure. Why not? Why not? I'll just leave it like that. It's fine. Okay. Oh, yes. You look very ready to take on Baldur's Gate now. <laughs> very ready. Still alive. So that's progress. Okay. And let's get a round of speaking to everybody in. Nope, okay, we're perfectly fine. Let's get out of here then. Alright. Ooh, and the diva has just become a pouch. 
but that pouch is still in steel distance so yeah we're gonna have to we're gonna have to not <laughs> okay let's get into these tombstones one more hapless farmer boy name unknown oh well at least they came Here and we go. actually buried him Bibik, favored of Ogma. Your songs live on in the streets and in our hearts. Right. Okay. Billiam. They got the bad man, Mum, so we're safe now. You don't have to worry about me. I'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you Here will. Rest the remains of Ronnie Morello, cause of death, starvation. Oh, well, that's Honored terrible. Honored Commander Harold Loggerson, killed by deceitful followers of Baal. We will not let this happen again. I mean, lots of people have been killed by Baal's followers since, so uh, you didn't do a good job, did you? Rest in peace, Janina. Beloved mother, gone too soon. Okay. Here lies Anna Marie, my nanny, but good as mum. Okay. I fear not my child. The stone on this vandalized tomb now reads, "Fear the Lord of Bones; he never dies." Oh, okay. The rights will be said. This tombstone has been vandalized. Its original wording replaced with, "Vampires are real." <laughs> Well, you know, they needed to get the word out somehow, and apparently... Ooh, yep, the Hewn Mausoleum. Apparently, that gravestone was how they decided to do it. Totally acceptable, I'm sure. Oh, let's grab that corpse rose, definitely. Sweet. Okay, so, can we actually get into the Hewn Mausoleum? Keep your distance, darling. Medium toughness. Ouch! <laughs> Okay, Someone okay. <laughs> Alright. We had the key apparently. Oh, and there's a tripwire right there. Okay. Well, give me a second, guys, and you can disarm that Astarian. Okay. Was that it? I think that was it. Okay. Traps. How considerate. <laughs> that was definitely not it. Okay. Uh, come over here and disarm this then, please. That oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And... Is that a pressure plate then? Traps. How considerate. Oh gosh. Get a little bit closer. Yeah. And disarm that, please. A trap. Oh my gosh. Someone doesn't like visit. Well, well, well. Get a little bit closer. Anything else want to pop? No? Okay, disarm that. Nice and easy. Okay. Yep, let's get some candles lit. I'm guessing that's gonna be one. Oh dear. Yeah. Someone's left a trap out for us. Okay. Is that crumbling wall sweet? Yeah, I can see that huge emptiness up here and I thought, hmm. <laughs> Could it be? And yes, it is. Okay, well, let's have a look around. Jake's Encyclopedia of Eels. Not exactly the book you want to be buried with, really. But I guess whoever Hewn is really wanted their reading material to come with them. Let's get around here just in case. Very slowly. That uh, might be worth a look. Okay. Ooh. 
Okay. And that's just a cracked tile. Traps. With a <laughs> with a mausoleum key. Okay, disarm that. Okay, a gold. Sweet. So, one of these was... It looked like a pressure plate. So let's just... No? That's not a pressure plate. Or if it is, a starion isn't heavy enough. <laughs> well, okay. And that looks to be it. Yeah, looks to be it. Okay. Well then, check well, the sarcophagus. Ah, strength. Okay. Well, take the hill giant strength potion. Oh! <laughs> well. Mmm. Mmm. Uh. Never mind. <laughs> Minthara, Who's next? I gave you the the extremely strong gloves, didn't I? Gauntlets of hill giant strength. Yes, I did. So get over here what and open here? that sarcophagus, please. She gets a plus six to it. Okay. Go for it. Damn right. <laughs> Damn right. Awesome. At Hewn Mausoleum Golden Key. The skeleton has something. A bone. You can keep that. Shield plus one. The legacy of Hewn. And a black diamond. Sure, we'll take those. Let's read this. Kneel with the weight of all you value at his feet and he will reveal himself. Uh Okay. If I must. Uh Crouch. Of doors. No. Oh wait, is it going to is it does it mean I need to chuck all my gold out? Drop that. No, I guess we don't value it. Okay. Huh. It's gonna have to be on my gold, isn't it? Oh, damn. Yeah, I resorted all my potions and stuff, so it's all gone from in here. That's annoying. Well, I'll sort those later. Forget that. Um, drop all my money. Is that it? No? Okay. Well, oh, never mind. Okay. Maybe, maybe it was a trap. Maybe we disarmed it somehow. Kneel with the weight of all you value at his feet and he will reveal himself. Huh. That's as close to kneeling as we're getting anyway. Never mind. I mean, if it didn't want all my gold, <laughs> then that's his problem. Anyway, Minthara, come and attack now this wall. Die. Uh, 
Okay. And there is a corridor. Ah, to more sarcophagi and a way out. Okay, have we just knocked through into somebody else's crypt? <laughs> That's kind of funny. Garion Mausoleum. Oh my god. Garion got a mausoleum? Really? I thought we'd left his body, you know, to rot outside of Candlekeep. Unfortunately, because, but we were on the run, weren't we? Well, good for him if he got a mausoleum out of it anyway. Well, the statue in his mausoleum is broken. Okay. The way is clear. That's that's curious. Very curious. I would gladly force somebody else through there, <laughs> but I don't fit. Okay. A scroll. Um. Kellia, just in case, you have a look at the scroll. They say that lighting a candle at the mausoleum of Garion grants the writer a wish. I never was the superstitious sort, but desperation makes believers of us all. Here is my wish. Please let me survive. I do not wish to be killed by cultists of any kind. I do not wish to be disappeared in the night or to be crushed beneath the steel shoe of an automaton. Everything seems so strange suddenly. Everyone seems so desperate. I'm alone in this world. If I don't look after myself, no one will. Maybe you would be willing to help me. Oh, okay. Who? <laughs> Who? Ah, no, we'll leave it. It's fine. At Lord Gregorian Garion. Oh, okay, okay. So it's not our Garion then. A plea for freedom. The city deserves better than Enver Gortash and his army of steel puppets. Let the city win, not him. Ah. So, Garion's uh, crypt is open to the public. What's inside? Hymns for the Gone. A book of prayers to Kelimvor, judge of the dead. Someone has annotated it with the following. These are little saccharine in places, but one or two have genuine merit as something more than religious doggerel. Something that actually evokes the complicated feelings of loss and hope for the departed, their well-being, their eternal preservation in some paradise. Hmm. Okay. A plea to the gods. My bones ache, wounds long scarred throb as if new. I long for the comfort of my pipe and the warmth of the fire, but I cannot stop. Gods, old and new, hear me. Grant me the strength to keep fighting, the courage to carve out a future for my children. And when I die, the peace that comes with knowing that I did all I could. Okay. So, all of these scrolls, they're not things that he was buried with they're just hopes maybe yeah hopes and wishes patrons of our hero this compendium lists and pays special tribute to the citizens of Baldur's Gate who commissioned and paid for the mausoleum spot honoring Garion Garion was a hero and sage of exceptional mind and respectable manner and under a graying exterior he harbored a heart that bloomed kind and good and evergreen so it is our Garion. Nothing to uh, attack, no walls to attack. No. Well, let's have a look in the sarcophagus then. Oh, wait, Another no. Step forward. Minthara can have a look in the sarcophagus. Searching. Yeah, it's a strength thing. Go for it. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Minthara, you had the best 
the best chance. Ugh. Can you just try again? She can't. Okay. Starion? Uh, yeah, go for it. Oh, no. It seems the game doesn't want us to get into this one. Okay. Yes. Gail, <laughs> why don't you have a try? Hmm. Yeah. Advantage on strength checks. But that would increase his size, so... Oh, no. Just try it as you are. Maybe you'll roll high. Okay, never mind, Gil. <laughs> never a well, Kellia. Yeah. You... Mm. Okay. Take your hill giant strength potion. Yeah, and if we don't get this, then we'll leave this tomb unmolested. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, I think Kelly heard me and took offence. Okay, good. Use that anger. Uh, Lord Gregorian Garion. Open. A gold ring. Hmm, okay. Uh, elixir of heroism, plate armor, and a great sword. No, it's not. It, this is not our Gryon. Because there's no way he would have been able to wear plate armor. Honestly. I'm going back and forth on this. <laughs> I'm sure Gryon was his first name. And this is someone else's last name, so it can't be. You'll take the elixir, though. The elixir of heroism. Can't slow down. Um, that was me pressing tab instead of alt. Honestly. Oh, gold. Yeah, let's not leave without the gold. <laughs> there was more torches. <laughs> but we don't want to go out just yet. We have other things through here to still find. Like, how to open this wall. I don't have a convenient backpack to uh, throw everything into. Is it... <laughs> I'm not going to get naked here. Going. Come on. This has to open some other way. Can we throw him out then? <laughs> oh my god, yes we can. But I guess we don't value him. Well, never mind. Let's put him away, I guess. Did he have any? Just a bone? Um. How about. Trust no one. How about knowledge? Maybe. What's that? Oh! How. Okay, I'm not gonna question it. Go in there. Don't linger. Okay, what, what, I, I have no idea, unless, oh, was it, Kellia? Was it the main character? The main character being what you valued most? I don't know, Secret Societies of the Sword Coast exposed. Okay, and what else did he get? 
On the inevitability of moral decay and its benefits. I think we've read that one in Kazador's place, is it? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think we've... Yeah. Okay, read the journal. This old diary contains thousands of short entries describing the writer's doings in short, factual sentences. One entry catches your eye. It was, it was introduced to me as the Emperor. Surprising. But its information was good. Its ideas, brilliant. It'll not turn up my nose. A boon to the knights, I think. Ah, okay. Okay. Oh. And whoever that was has been knocked off. Well, that's a shame. Sit in the chair. <laughs> okay. The golden key, okay. Uh, 131 gold, elixir of cloud giant strength, and an oil of diminution. Okay, thank you. And a heavy chest. Hey, 52 gold and a jacinth. Well, it's a shame all of these statues seem to be crumbling. If he, to if he spoke about the Emperor, then he can't be very old. So, you know, what happened here? What happened here? We're taking that. We are taking it. Oh, that's it. That's it. Okay. Yeah, time to go. Um, who's... Uh, Minthara and Kelia are still in sneak. Sometimes. Speak quickly. Okay. At least things have stayed interesting. Now let's get out of here. So where's Gerion's tomb? on my feet. Aha! Garion Mausoleum. Okay. Oh, Garion Mausoleum Key. More for me. Not that it matters. Let's grab the weave moss. Okay, and read this tombstone here. This stone on this vandalized tomb reads... Cry a rain of tears, so flowers may bloom over Iris. Ah, oh, wow. Okay. Ooh. Bone cap. Okay, and there's some weave moss over there. Alright, so. We'll just unlock the Garion Mausoleum. Oh, no, of course. No, we won't. We'll just go through it, of course. Let's go back out. I assume that was the... yeah. Help me? Help me. Merkel? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that kid is into some dangerous stuff and I'm not sure I want to associate. But she is... she is calling to Merkel so I feel like we should at least Tell her the dangers. Or him. Sounded like a girl. Yeah. And we can't read these tombstones right here? No. Okay. Here lies Duncan, last of the gory clan, who died without issue. Died without issue. Okay, well, good for him. Final resting place of Dolcan Elendara. Ever close to your beloved Elf Song Tavern. Oh. <laughs> and you? Here lies Ogre Bob. His arm, anyway, it's all that would fit. He will be missed at Whitburn Quarry. Oh. And you? M. Kerwin. Treasured. M. Kerwin. Okay. It was in a courier's note. Something about settling matters with nine fingers. Oh my god, that was... Oh, is that... That's one of the ones that we got with Scratch when we first found Scratch, wasn't it? 
Oh my god. Well. We'll definitely be uh, taking a look in there. Are you coming my way or are you going up there? Going up there, good. Um, hide and get into that dirt mound. Oh, okay. What's he doing? Get them dusty fingers off my crate. Your crate? I don't think so. Were you buried in there? It's not a crate and it's definitely not yours. The crate was promised to Nine Fingers. You don't want to steal from her, do you? What you're doing in my father's grave? Oh, sorry, I'll let you rest in peace. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. The deception would be nice. I kind of think that would be funny. Intimidation is just not very good. Or I could just say it's not a crate and it's not yours. Hmm. Oh, we've got to do it. We've got to do it. Yours? I don't think so. This is my father's grave. What are you doing in here? Oh. 25. But you have you have plus sixteen. You should be good with this, Kellya. Oh, okay. Oh, just oh my god! Oh my god, that was so close. Oh, yeah. Father, ain't no bones in there. Uh, just don't. Unless his bones didn't stay buried. Uh -huh. Unless they rose up to join the absolute, or who knows what else. No, you can keep Daddy's gold. Just don't blame me if he comes looking for it. <laughs> okay. And let's just get into sneak and definitely keep Daddy's gold. <laughs> Come on. 343 gold, a gold ingot, arrow of Ilmata, and a smoked powder arrow. For the taking. Damn. And we got some inspiration for that. So we are at max now. Okay. Well, that was a long time to wait for a payoff. <laughs> oh my god. Antonio Bongle, proud father of Walbron, remembered by the sun. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's get over here. The yeah, cops rose. My pack. Is that? No, that's not. Okay. And you. Gwyn Highberry. Still born, but not forgotten. Highberry. Oh. Okay, that's that must be why they turn to wine. <laughs> ah, Sandril. Gone, but ne'er forgotten. This headstone is anonymous, reading only, As I am now, so you shall be. Okay. Here lies flying Martha, who couldn't. <laughs> Beloved little Tan, never forgotten. Kalimvor, guide your soul. Okay. All right, and over here there's a plaque. Let's, Let's read this. A statue of Jurgle, lord of the end of everything. The final scribe of the fate of the deceased. Yeah, with his gold tips on his fingers, which still have not been taken. Gravestones have been vandalized, but the actual gold not taken. <laughs> uh, Half-eaten apple, sure. The house on Drench Lane and other stories. And a corpse rose. Okay, let's come down this way. That's not somewhere we can get in. Let's talk to you, Druna Schweitz. They got him, honey. They got the bastard that did this to you. Good. Beloved Agnes Schweitz. Her smile shined like a thousand suns. 
Oh, look here. Prisoner 3046, commended to Jurgle's ledger. Wow. Yeah, well, at least prisoner, whatever it was, managed to get a gravestone. Flandro Tarask Biter Grassley. The hunter hunted, the biter bit. Interesting. Okay. But why is it laying down like that? Oh, no, we can't move it. Okay. Well, never mind. Here lies Arthur Billfold, dedicated patron of unconventional arts. <laughs> okay. Here rots an executed traitor to the city. Do not repeat his mistakes. Okay, but I th <laughs> some random family was going to have to throw the body in the Chiantha, but uh, a, an actual traitor to the city gets gets buried with a tombstone. Okay. Maybe the traitor to the city had a lot of money. Ooh, grand mausoleum. Well. Let's get over here and speak to this child, Nina Dortmel. Right here. Psst. Keep a look out. The Mortark don't take kindly to raising the dead, but I won't be long. I promise. Ah, okay. Uh, who are you raising from the dead? Sure, the coast is clear. You're just a child. Is this a good idea? Or whatever you're doing, stop it. Magic isn't a game. Nah. No, I think it's probably going to be two or one, but I'm not all that interested in number one, so... Yeah, this kid has... she's got guts. She's actually going to attempt to raise the dead. Go for it, kid. Go for it. Oh, sure thing. Mortak is all the way over the other side. Coast is clear. I'm coming, Garrett. Just hang on. Exorde me, Merkel. Oh, <laughs> damn. Resuscita fratamian. Emorte ad me redigo eo. The air crackles with power damn. before fizzing out. The child has power but lacks control. Oh, you're close, Merkel. I can feel your shadow. Give my brother back, please! I mean, he's just gonna come back as a zombie, surely. Here, yeah, this scroll might do the trick. Arcana. <laughs> you need to focus your power, make it a sharpened point, like the tip of an arrow. The spell you're looking for is Raise Undead. This is how you do it. And your brother deserves to rest in peace. Let him. Keep trying, you'll get it eventually. Oh, that was dangerous. You must never do that again. Ah, okay. Arcana is going to be really bad for me. Really bad for me. But I feel like this is the kind of time when you would give tips to the child. She was so close. Really close. So, hmm. I kind of want to do that one, Raise Undead. But I mean, her, her brother's going to be an undead. <laughs> well, never mind. She chose this, so let's at least try the Arcana roll. Mm, that was a good attempt. But I think what you're looking for is Raise Undead. This one here. Look, this is how you do it. It's only a 10, but I don't get any pluses and bonuses or anything like that. And Gail isn't apparently going to step in and help the child, so... Roll well, Kellia. Or not, depending. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh yeah, instructing the children to break the law. Definitely something Kellia can do. She nods along, enraptured by your explanation. Oh, that makes way more sense. Let me try again. Yeah, this is not going to go well for your kid, though. 
e muce ad mei radico eo. Oh. Oh, yes. Wow, she's got a lot of power. Oh, greater zombie. Skeleton. Zombie. 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 <laughs> Garrett Dortmel is... Oh my gosh. Oh, he's just a skeleton. He looks scary, but he's, he's just a skeleton. Okay. He is silent. He has an extra attack. And he's got resistance for most things. Damn. Damn. Edict of the Old Lord Skull. The Deathless One protects his fetid flock. Merkel grants the affected entity necrotic veil every turn. Okay. Well. Damn. That kid is so dead. She's so dead. <laughs> Kelia, disengage because you need to get into this one. Damn right. Damn right. Okay, so that should be. Okay, it doesn't have piercing resistance anymore because I have this in my main hand so it should have got vulnerability to piercing so it's negated its uh, piercing resistance good good ah okay and the mortark is coming over <laughs> it wasn't my fault it was this child here okay let's get into you um he he needs an 18 and rolled 24. Oh, okay. He actually rolled a 13. Sure, have a critical. Damn right. And the offhand. And there we go. Okay. That was unfortunate. <laughs> that was unfortunate, child. But that's what you get, isn't it? They don't actually go for the ch the civilians, though, do they? So I think she'll be fine. Yeah. Nothing important is ever easy. Gail. Can you have that on? Yes. The greater zombie. That's nice. That was very nice, Gail. Is that only once? Or is it? It's tog toggleable passive, so I assume it's going to be more than once, but we'll see. And no, wait. Okay, and she's on the way. Okay, she's got a spiritual weapon up. Alright, Minthara. Get into this one. Uh, don't react. Lovely. Get into that one. Don't react. Lovely. Okay. And... Hmm. Get around here. And between Kelia and the rest of them. Okay. And... Yeah, give Kelia branding. Very nice. Oh, okay, okay. Um, hmm, shocking grasp. Just enough ordinary opportunity attack. Um, which one is it? Is it? It's not the greater zombie. It's that one. Regular Divine Smite. Yeah, there we go. Ooh. Okay. Are you, you're running in. Maud, don't do it. <laughs> oh, honestly. Um, well, if she wants to, I'm not going to stop her. Get into that one. 
Lovely. And get your off hand into that one. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Hysterian. Oh, yeah, no. You need to get into that one. Damn right. Ah, just do that one. Yeah, okay. End your turn. And Gale should just be able to take that one out. Gale! <laughs> Gale! Okay, undead fortitude. So he did actually he did actually kill it, but it got one hit point back. Well, never mind. Maybe Maybe Maud will survive. Who knows? Who are you going for? Ah, okay, neither of them. Fine. Go for this. And then go for that one. Lovely. Oh, at least you tried, kid. At least you tried. <laughs> Nothing in that. Okay, what about her brother? Plate armor and a great sword. Okay. Take him. Sure, why not? <laughs> Grief is hard. Let flowers say what words never can. Yeah, and you came running? Well, at least, at least this person who apparently wants to give me flowers was he? Wait, is that hers? Okay, is she a, she's a flower vendor. Let's speak to her. At least she came running though. At least she came Would to help. Would like some flowers? They do a wonder at brightening up a grave. I bring fresh ones to my husband every few days. <sighs> okay. Okay, let's see your flowers then. Of course. And what does she have? Autumn crocus, balsam, belladonna, and black oleander. Sure. Absolutely, thank you. Come back any time. You won't find fresher. Sure. <laughs> Let's grab that bone cap. Every color of the rainbow, right All right, so these these other tombstones that we didn't get to because the child took our attention away. This tomb has been defaced with crude marks pointing downward. Okay. Aridin the Elder, open the bloody gates. Aridin the Elder. Aridin was the the human at the grove, wasn't it? Open the bloody gates. I guess that's a hereditary thing then. <laughs> okay. Adventurers Alexa and Orion Goodbeard, intrepid explorers of the Plain of Shadows. Nice. Okay. Jay Orchard, artificer of Gond, crafter of odd sockets. Ah, okay. Eldoth Kron. Raise a glass to the poor bastard. <laughs> Fidia Pengist. A noble lanceboard player to the last. Yep. Okay. Didn't know her name. We just called her Grimishka. All right. Burial site of Garrett Dortmel. May you Every finally find your rainbow. rest. Right here. Okay. Andreas Lota, beloved of Ciro Lali. May we keep your hearth warm. Very nice. Okay, and Grand Mausoleum while we're here. Damn it, that one's actually locked. Okay, okay. Well, Brighten get in there. It's only a ten. Nice, and this wasn't trespass, so we're good. Oh yeah. Let's get in there. 
Uh huh. Ancient mausoleum. Oh yes. Okay. Oh yes. Okay. Well, I don't like those candles. And those? Why not? And let's get to work. Wow. Oh. This is more dangerous than I thought. Uh, two bones. Okay. Maybe, maybe you guys stay here, and Astarian can disarm that. Be careful. Ah, okay. Okay. Skulls and bones, okay. Yes, please. Well, there was hidden keys in the hewn mausoleum, so I'm gonna guess that there are some in here. But if not, I'm sure we can lockpick them, no problem. Interesting. Oh dear. Someone's ah. trying to trap out for us. Keep disarming then. Sweet. Okay. It's mine now. It is. Okay, so sarcophagus. Okay, come on, you can do it. Oh, you can't do it. <laughs> Never mind. I hope this is important. It is. Come for and get this sake. for me, please. Yep. Oh, yes. There we go. Showing him how it how it's done. Oh, yes. Grand Mausoleum Offerings Key, two of them, a scroll of Revivify, and a skull. Sweet. So, yeah. We didn't even have to go into the other room to get the keys for this. Way. Not fine. <laughs> well, good. Oh, yes. 69 gold, topaz, divine bone shard, and wood bark. 120 gold, Malice, Elixir of Psychic Resistance, and Elixir of Fire Resistance. Damn. That's cool. Nothing in there, though. Nothing in there. Okay. And through the door. Ah, a library. Turn on the lights and have a look around. Crumbling journal. I was still a supplicant when I came face to face with him, masked in gold, his fi his skin fine and worn as parchment. Jurgel, the Death Keeper, the end of everything. I asked what he needed of me. He asked a simple question. What is the worth of a single mortal's life? I knew not how to respond and said as such. He seemed nonplussed, neither disappointed nor pleased. I felt my knees in respect for his awesome power. This garnered no reaction. There I stared, trembling with an emotion I could not name. And when I stood again, the final scribe was gone. Well, okay. Okay, are you trying to tell me that Withers is Jurgle? <laughs> No, he's just one of the Jurgle's priests. Um, um, it was in a, a temple to Jurgle that we found him. So I think I think he was just a high priest, maybe, of Jurgle. Oh, we'll take the book anyway. Maybe we can ask him. Ooh, scroll of cloud kill. Lovely. Case file 846. 
This is a very strange place to leave your case file. But sure. Baldur's Gate versus Flynn Silver. Case for prosecution, Master Silver did, with forethought and without malice, kill William Lister and Simon Simi Trint at their home as part of an ungodly ritual to honour the Dead Three, or one of the Dead Three, the gods Bane, Baal or Merkel. Case for defence. I don't know nothing, sick, about any gods. All I know is Bill and Simi were trying to cut me out of our deal and they got what they had coming, but those symbols and stuff. And how the guts were arranged? I don't know nothing. Sick. Verdict. Guilty. Sentence. Death. Commuted to banishment so as not to anger higher powers. Really? Not to anger higher powers. As in, just in case he did make the offering to Baal, Bain and Merkel, they didn't want to offend them by banishing him from making it? Oh, because he was uh, a high-placed person in society. Who knows? Yeah, I think that's it for this one as well. Some pretty cool stuff in here. Pretty cool stuff in all of the mausoleums. Okay. But no, no destroyable walls here. Good. Let's get out of here. Grief is hard. Let flowers say what words yeah, never okay. can. Well, I think I'll probably leave it here. We've done quite a lot to say that we've barely moved from where we started. But this is a very large graveyard. <laughs> and there's some really cool places to jump into. Quite a few nice mausoleums to explore. And that poor child. <laughs> Trying to raise her brother. Maybe we should have told her that it was a piece, but really. No. You need to encourage the child that shows promise. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe. I upload five videos a week, so hit the bell for notifications. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.